Thank you. I carried my purse up here, but I'm not going anywhere. I am just staying right here. So let me take you all in. Hi. Hi. Oh, it's good to see you guys. Hi, sweeties. I just love being here. And my topic today is love is a choice. Now, that is a really weird topic, especially since we're in church and we're talking about love and we live love and we know that we are love. So let me do a caveat to that. I believe that there are about four stages to love and that's where choice comes in. The first stage is we started out as spirit in this wonderful heaven space and we were God beings and we wanted to come down here and the one ad said that we needed to come down here to be love and we said well yeah that's what we are that's a no-brainer I can be love we are love then we came down here to this earth plane and some people call it 3D and what happened was fear was introduced so there are two energies, fear and love. And so now we think we have a choice, but we're programmed to be fearful. That's right. You're brainwashed into thinking that fear is real and we have to react to it. And when we react to it, we create certain things in our life. And then when we create certain things in our life, it becomes a pattern. And we think that's the way life is. And we forgot about love. So there are a lot of people on our planet that don't know that love is the reality, the true reality. And so they're always reacting out of fear. So do they have a choice to love? Well, not if you forget who you are, that you're love. Remember, you started out as love. Now you're brainwashed to think that fear is all there is. So do you really know that there's a choice? You only know that there's a choice when somebody loving comes into your life and reminds you who you are. But until then, you think fear is real. And so you're always reacting out of fear. And so I'm making that caveat. First, we know we're love. Second, we think we're fear. And then the third is the people that have heard about fear, that have had maybe loving people in their life, but they still are in this duality of fear and love. And so that they, they know there's a choice, but oftentimes they'll override it with their emotions and the situation. So they do have a choice, but it's a hard choice sometimes. And you go in and out of it, kind of like you phase in and you phase out. You're not consistent. And then there's the fourth phase. The fourth phase is when you remember. You know your love. And there's nothing that can take you out of it. So you're not phasing in, you're not phasing out. Doesn't matter what situation is going on, doesn't matter what rude person you run across or hateful, you know who you are. And when you know, you can see it in the hateful person who they are. Now that's Christy, <laughs> right? I mean, that is going towards the Jesus, the Buddha, all of that, right? So you're saying, well, you know, I'm a human. You know, I'm not like that. Well, I'm here to tell you, you've always been like that since the beginning, because we started out as love, pure love. That's who we are. And then we got hoodwinked. As Malcolm X says, hoodwinked, bamboozled, led astray. We were sold a, what is it, a thing of goods, right? And it wasn't good. So now we have to decide which of that four are we. And I tend to think that you're probably three or four, phasing in, depending on the situation, depending on the family member that's acting out of line, 
Then we phase back out. It's Sunday. We're going to put on a happy face. <laughs> We're going to be loved. We're going to choose love. And we feel good. We get in traffic. We phase out again. <laughs> So we might be a little bit of the phasers in three or four. I want to show you this slide, this first slide here. And this is, I love this because it really breaks it down really easily. It says, fear brings illusions. Illusions bring doubt. Doubt brings confusion. And confusion brings fear. Thus, the cycle of darkness regenerates itself. It's like we phase in. We get doubtful of who we are, and then we phase out again, and that's fear. But I will tell you that we can really actually be consistent with love. So pre peace brings stillness. Stillness brings knowing. Knowing brings truth. What is the truth? Well, truth brings freedom. Freedom brings joy. And joy brings love. Love brings peace. And so it is. We grow in light. And so I brought a prop today because I, I like props. And props can help us. I'm a visual learner, so I've got to see what people are talking about. And I love this thing. This is a kid's toy that I ran across. And I was like, if you're reacting in fear, you're going to think, well, I'm, I'm just going to react in fear. Well, something else pops up that you're afraid of. And then you've got to, well, I'm, I, I can't do And then it, it, and, uh, what's going on? Why is the world just so crazy? I'm just trying my best. And these things are just keep happening and pumping up. It's like one of those games in the circus where you just pound the thing and it comes right back up again because that's a pattern. Did you know fear generates a pattern in your life? that when you think that the other shoe is going to drop, it will? Because you already said it was going to, and the universe says, well, so it is. And so you think you're doing, and I'm doing this, and I went to church, and this is still happening, and I prayed for this, and why? Well, you're giving that energy of fear and doubt and all of that stuff that creates a pattern and so there's no wonder that these things keep popping up so what is the answer not to be fearful well it's to remember that you are love and in the love frequency things turn out a little differently but it, you have to set an intention you know what an intention is? An intention practice that I love is that you wake up in the morning and you say, I can't wait to see what good is going to show up. Now, is that a different frequency? That is such a different frequency than, oh, my goodness, not another day. What's going to happen this time? Now, you can feel that energy, right? That's going to generate something. So all I'm saying is that this magical place that we're living in, we can choose an intention of love, light, and peace, and that's going to give us a pattern of that. So I want to show you this clip that really, really hones this in, because once again, I'm a visual learner. And see if you can see what this person is doing. Morning, everybody. Let's get started, Kenny. At 7, I'm going to throw your newspaper into the bushes. Mm, can you make it 7.30 when the sprinklers come on? Done. At, at 10.45, I'll let you know that a computer virus totally wiped out your hard drive. Terrific. Janine. On your way to the client presentation, you're going to blow a tire and have to walk across town to get there. Will it be raining? Hard. Great. Becky, anything to add? You're still going to be giving me the silent treatment for no apparent reason. Awesome. Good thing I had my orange juice. Take on the day with the natural goodness of 100% pure Florida. Now, the reason I love that is that hysterical. And it goes against what we are trained to do. We're trained to react to every situation as if it's like tragic. And what I'm saying is that when you do, your emotions, which is energy in motion, will create the next 
crazy thing in your life. What this demonstrates is that you don't have to react. You can respond. How do you respond? With the intention that you set that day. If the intention is nothing is going to steal my joy and you're going to keep your joy, then those things that you thought <laughs> were going to wreck your joy they're not going to because you've already set the intention. In other words, do you see you're not phasing in and you're not phasing out based on situations, based on events. So that demonstration is a spiritual practice. It's not going to happen overnight because you're still going to be reactive. You're still going to have your triggers. Somebody is not going to act a certain way based on your expectation. But it should not take you out of your intention, which is to create joy, to be joy, to be love, to remember who you are. Situations are designed. We are programmed to be taken out of joy and love. Why do you think that is? Because that's where we're most powerful. That's where our most creative energy is. That is the energy that changes the world. Let me give you another example. By the same token that I can have energy that is so destructive and so angry, and I made those patterns, I can create joyful energy and shift my reality. In Sedona, we call it portal jumping. <laughs> I'm not going to go there with you into the 5D ascension, but I am telling you in a simple way that that's how you shift your perspective. Now, that was a therapist term, shifting your perspective, changing your perspective. It's the same thing. You can change your reality by having a joyful intention. Joy pops up. Oh, I didn't expect that. That was really great. Isn't life wonderful? Another great thing happens. And then your friends will say, well, I'm going to follow you around. And then you say, yes, follow me around because you will see that I am attracting wonderful things in my life. And it'll seem like magic. And it is. Now, let me give you another example of this, because uh, I love these. I want so here's another slide, another video. Morning, guys. What's on the agenda? At 9.27, I'm going to give you a ticket the second your meter expires. Sweet. Professor. I'm moving your 10.15 class way across campus. Making me sprint to be on time. You can try. Kevin. I'll spend our entire 1 o'clock lab texting my girlfriend. Will I do all the work? What? Amazing. And my illegally parked car? You'll show up just as I'm towing it away. I'll probably run after you yelling stop. And I'll keep driving. Perfect. Good thing I have my orange juice. Just not your car. Take on the day with the natural goodness of 100% pure Florida orange juice. I love those. Aren't those funny? But I want you to really get the lesson that when something is confronted to you, one of the spiritual practices that I used to do was I would say, Oh, that's good stuff. So when that guy is saying, yeah, I'll tow your car away and you'll go running it, I would be like, oh, that's good stuff. <laughs> because my attitude is going to dictate the next thing that happens. That's how powerful we are. So there is this energy that you've heard about. It's called chi. This energy is invisible, but it's there. It is reacting off the energy of our thoughts and our intention. So based on our intention, we are dictating the next thing that happens. That's why one person can have a magical life and another person can be really struggling because they don't realize how powerful their thoughts are. Not only do they affect situations, but they affect people. And you've heard this before. You, the boss yells at you. You go home, yell at the wife or the husband. The husband yells at the kids. The kids kick the dog. The dog chases the cat. 
This energy is real. And we know it affects people and it affects situations. That's how powerful we are. So is love a choice? Not for those who know this. It's not a choice. It is who I am. It is who you are. And when I recognize that, then my thoughts begin to align. My power begins to concentrate. And now I'm able to create wonderful situations in my life, but not only that, I'm able to be an example of love to the number twos. Remember the number twos, the level twos? All they know is fear. All they know is struggle. They've forgotten who they are. They've been programmed so deeply to think that fear is real. Now you become an example, like Jesus, like Buddha, like any lighthouse. You are there to light the way and to show what is possible. With this energy, anything is possible. Now, one of the things that we know, in especially beca because of the pandemic and things that are going haywire in the world, it's because people don't know about conscious or collective consciousness. Collective consciousness is when everything is going really good in your life and all of a sudden you're like, I haven't watched the news, but I'm feeling this anxiety, that something's going on. What is that? We're all connected, you see. We're all entangled because of physics. Remember that invisible energy? We're all connected. And so when society is having one of those moments, that is when it's like this. It's like, I'll give you an example. When they talk about race and they say this race is bad and this race is good, it's like this. You're punching this down so that this can be stood up, but it affects everybody. It affects chaos. This is chaos, by the way. When it's like this, because we're all connected, you can't push somebody else down and not be affected yourself. We're all connected. So this is collective chaos, collective consciousness. The only way to transmute that, to change that, is remember that love creative energy? That's creative. Fear is destructive. So on the news, you'll hear a lot of destructive stuff. This is engineered chaos for us to stay disempowered. The only way that we cannot feed into that is what? To remember who we are. We are love itself. We are powerful God beings. That's who we are. And so what do we do? Well, to correct this chaos, it's not to say one group is bad and one group is good. That's all chaos. One goes down, one goes up temporarily. It's an illusion. The only way is for everybody to come up. How do you do that? Well, you have to do the inner work. You have to go do the inner work. And once you do the inner work, then everybody rises. And you don't have to rise before I do. In other words, I don't have to say to you, well, you be more loving. <laughs> you straighten up. No, this is our inner work. When I do my inner work, we're all connected. That helps you rise. Do you see nobody is down now? Everybody remembers who they are because we started out this way. We're just love. We're just love twinklers. <laughs> That's what we are. We're so precious. And then we come down here, we forget who we are, and we're introduced to fear. And then we inter are introduced to love, 
But then we fade in and out based on situations, based on our car tire blowing out. And boy, that just ruins three months <laughs> of love. And then we recognize who we are. We're just love itself. And then there's no choice. That's just who you are. And you become a lighthouse. Let me tell you that now on this planet, we need you. We need you instead of fading in and out based on situations, based on somebody's behavior, based on the news. We need to be strong in knowing who we are and confident and stand in it. Love no matter what. Love is not a choice at that point. Everything revolves around love. And that's how the world goes back to the beginning, heaven on earth. Let's take a deep breath. Let's breathe that knowing in, knowing who we are. Oh, that's so, so peaceful right there. I don't have to be anything else but my authentic self. I don't have to speak anything else but loving thoughts because that's the truth. I don't have to search for the truth. The truth is me and is all of us. There's only one. We're all connected. We're all divine. We are all light beings. Pure light. Let's take a deep breath. I also know that situations may try to pull me out of my knowing, my trusting. But I am more powerful than any situation outside of me. As I breathe that knowing in, I recognize that to shift my perspective I need to see the truth. I need to be the truth. And I need to shine the truth. The I am presence is in us shows up as us and we are the example of heaven on earth As I breathe in that knowing, I let my light shine, not based on circumstances, but based on my DNA and who I know myself to be, and not just me, but everyone. I let this truth be so, and so it is. Oh.